agrikultura po, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, as you know, during the budget deliberation of that agency, <coughs> some fundamental questions were not properly and intelligently answered. For example, they were unable to explain the relations between the farm gate or the, the price of palay and the price of milled rice. Because we were able to show that the, the palay price is only 12 pesos per kilo, and by rule of thumb, it should be multiplied by two. So the milled rice should be able to raise a price of only 24 plus a profit margin of, let's say, one or two pesos. Therefore, the price of rice, the milled rice, should be at least 26 or 25 pesos to be afforded by the consumers. But today, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, the price is ranging from 20, 36 to about 45 pesos. So that was not ably explained by the Department of Agriculture that also goes with the broiler, Mr. Speaker. The price of the broiler, the farm price, gate price is only 60 pesos. Again, the rule of thumb is to just add that by 50 pesos. That's easily 110 pesos. But you know the price of the broiler today when purchased in our marketplace, it's anywhere between 200 to 250 pesos. And you are correct, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, agriculture is very important considering that our country is an agricultural economy. I hope the budget should be able to address that in order for agriculture to be able to play a significant role as a backbone of the economy. Mr. Speaker, as I mentioned earlier, the country is far worse in economic position than the rest of the ASEAN countries. Our fiscal stimulus response is one among the lowest in the region. In a situation where millions continue to lose jobs, and fall into poverty, swift and substantial fiscal intervention is needed. I hope you can easily agree with me, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor. Thank you, even if you just nodded. Even, where, even when we are at worst economic crisis uh, in recent History, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor. Economic management seems to be holding off on unleashing the fiscal stimulus, I would say, bazooka. Specifically, the Department of Finance is more concerned about keeping the deficit spending below 10% of GDP than the size of the stimulus package. Mr. Speaker, in your opinion, Mr. Sponsor, will this be the right strategy to bring back confidence in the system, as you were earlier uh, articulating the importance of confidence in our economic system? Do you think government must conserve its fiscal stamina for the long and difficult recovery, or do we need to spend big? today and prevent a larger contraction in the immediate future? I know this is a very hard and difficult question to answer, but considering the brilliant oh. president economists of the, of the House, I think what you will say will probably give even a sigh of relief to most of us. Mr. Speaker, Your Honor. Mahabang away na po eh wala nung inasign tayo nung dating speaker na mamuno ng economic stimulus cluster na tayo ang house nanindigan 
ng halos 1.4 trillion na isang biglaan na pagsugpo. Dahil kung isipin niyo po, pag dumungaw ka dun sa kondo ko, andun pa naman yung SM, andun pa naman yung headquarter ni Ramon Ang, ikot-ikot pa rin naman po yung ibang jeep. Sabi ko, ang nawala lang ay tat, nung panahon na yun, tatlong buwan, kung saan pinagbawalan natin ang mga tao magtrabaho, pinagbawalan natin ang mga non-essential services na pumasok o tumigil. So, para bang gumawa tayo na napakalaki at hanggang ngayon nga po nararamdaman, we carve uh, a big hole na which we, we wanted to fill up, especially that this hole is uh, composed mostly of SMEs, which account for 13% of GDP, but 60% of total employment. So if you read the proposal of the House, it takes that position of, but it is a judgment call that if things get protracted, um, that yung atipong good financial standing sa buong mundo ay pwede pa rin natin gamitin. Ang argumento ko nun, anin mo ang pagiging white swan kung lahat ng nasa lake ay ugly duckling. Sa mga tuwid, ang sabi ko nun, gasto sana natin, pawal natin, yung napakalampung butas, simula Marso, Abril, Mayo, Nyulalyo, Agusto, hanggang ngayon. Subalit, kung uh, the position of the executive was, let's keep our powder dry, ang ibig sabihin, baka mahabang laban to, at uh, nakikinita naman natin sa ibang bansa, tulad ng Europa, na marami po nagkakaroon ng second Uh, second wave. Pero pag naman naman yung Estados Unidos, eh, nakahalos aabot na sila ng 9 trillion o kalahati ng kanilang GDP, eh talagang ginamit na po ng kanilang financial resources, ang kanilang financial resources. Dahil nga po sila ay dollar of first, re first da there po ang currency of first reserve. So we don't yet have that, ano. Pero in our limited means, ang masasabi ko po na yung Bayanihan 2 o yung Arise uh, would have prevented us from falling below 2.2. Pero we were way past the bridge. It's October. It's... Um, ang uh, pananaw ko po na maayos, mas gusto kong tingnan po yung mga meso factors, economics, like transportation, certain sectors that can drive economic growth uh, na pwede po natin gamitin para po punuan yung napakalaking kweba o napakalaking butas na ginawa po ng atipong patakaran para po hindi dumami ang COVID sa Pilipinas. Pero kung ako tatanungin niyo po, kailangan po talagang ayusin natin ang health. Kasi po, wala hong mangyayari kahit paliparan, kahit po magkaroon ko ng helicopter drop ng pesos sa buong tundo, itatago lang nila ang pera kung hindi sila sigurado na bukas may trabaho sila. Hindi sila mga siguro may trabaho sila kung walang negosyo. Walang negosyo, walang income, dahil wala pong help. So, balik po tayo. The principal means to restore any sense of normalcy or return to the trajectory of growth of the Philippines decides plainly and mainly on our ability 
to control COVID. Salamat po sa nakapagbibigay ng iba yung pag-asa na sagot po ninyo sa katanungang yun. Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, 4.5 trillion pesos by rule of thumb mga ilan pong mahihirap ang pwede nating mapag-graduate sa halagang yon, Mr. Speaker. Forty-four million, assuming it's a community college. Nasa sa inyo po yun kasi kayo po ay economist at ako naman po ay... I will honor your words, uh, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Forty-four million. Uh, yes. Kung ang uh, paggasta po ay talagang ibabasi sa isang tapat na implementation, mata-target ang sektor na kung saan talaga dapat gastahin ang pera na yon, mas or menos, and at the very least, 44 million Pilipinos ang maliliberate po natin sa poverty. Yun po ang ating uh, ibig sabihin, Mr. Speaker. Yun. Opo. Salamat po. Pero, mag, ano kagada ko, dahil may mga mandatory expenditure, katulad ng PS, Katulad po ng IRA, katulad po ng debt repayments. So, pag tinanggal mo yun, ang ating po talagang discretionary funds, magkano lang? <coughs> Kaya ko po na itanong yun, uh, Sir Speaker, you know, dahil alam po natin, until 2021, talaga pong darami yung ating... Uh, mga walang trabaho dahil nga sa COVID-19. And its impact in the economy could lead to at least 1.5 million Filipinos becoming poor according to ah. the PEDS. Ito po yung Philippine Institute of Development Studies. Without the government's social protection programs in place such as emergency subsidy, to small business wages subsidies and projected increase of poor Filipinos, lalo po sigurong tataas yung ating unemployment. Kaya po, Mr. Speaker, uh, yung funding allocations for implementation of its social amelioration na uh, mga programa for 2021 may not be enough to financially assist the workers in both formal and informal sectors adversely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Kung uh, bibigyan po natin ng halimbawa, Mr. Speaker, you know, ito pong uh, 2021 budget ng DOLE subsidy program ng TUPAD, ang uh, pondo po ay 9.9 .9 billion and the program aims to extend assistance to unemployed Filipinos, which as of July 2020 numbered to about 4.6 million based on the labor force survey. Under the program, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, its beneficiary will be given 5,000 pesos. A rough estimate will show that 9.9 .9 billion allocation can only serve 2 million workers. So, sa tingin ko po yung in ng DBM was grossly insufficient. Will that be a correct assessment, Mr. Speaker? Your Honor? I certainly would agree with you that uh, we could have provided more. Thank you. The 2020 health spending, including allotments under Bayanihan 1 and 2, totaled 181 billion. <coughs> the proposed 2021 health budget is down by 50 billion at only 131 billion. Yung current budget po, Mr. Speaker, 
ng DSWD, including Bayanihan 1 and 2 also, totaled 381.4 billion. And under the proposed 2021 budget, the DSWD will get only 170 billion. So wipe out clean for the 21, 2021 budget is the current 197 billion budget for SAP. Only the so-called for peace or Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino program and the pension for indigent and senior citizens will remain. This will be so, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor. The current budget for the Department of Public Works and Highways including money allocated under the Bayanihan 1 and 2, totaled 441.8 billion. Next year po, it will be 666.4 billion. By rule of thumb, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, ito pong 666.4 billion, ilang pong trabaho ang mag-generate dito? On the social side or the infra side? 655 billion are all the socials? 666.4 billion. For social? Yes. Uh, they tend to not create new jobs? Yes. Because it is uh, essentially. Mga ilan po kaya? By rule of thumb. Their welfare, preventing them from you know, falling down falling below the poverty line. They don't tend to create... The thing that creates jobs in our budget is infrastructure. So what does that mean, uh, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor? Pero kasi yung malaking budget tayo, nilala natin yung budgets, economic service, social services. Dahil hindi naman ang kakayanin ng buong ekonomiya, makapag-create ka agad ng trabaho, Para lahat po yung pool na mga mahihirap ay eh, makapagtrabaho. So, hindi naman pwede natin antayin na mamatay sila sa gutom. So, ginagawa po natin ang budget ay binabalansi natin na meron tayong binibigay, nilalaan para po sila ay masuportahan. Ang bawa po nga itong mga four-piece. So, di ko po alam kung gano'ng kalaki pero ang... Uh, Um, in, so, if kung akin pong very limited, Your Honor, I would say. Or 655 is just to save them from from dying of hunger. Uh, salamat po sa pag atubili pero ma mahirap po talaga. Pero naasahan po natin na sana itong pondong ito ay kahit pa paano ay pagmumulan ng napakaraming uh, trabaho lalong lalo na po dun sa bracket po talaga ng nangangailangan ng trabaho sapagkat dito lang po magmumula ang talagang ikinabubuhay nila. Nasa huli na po akong uh, pagtatanong, uh, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor. Ang proposed budget po ng DPWH for next year ay 469 billion. Uh, dito ay mga lump sum. Siguro po, uh, magkaroon ng consistency rito yung budget transparency and accountability. Napakalaking halaga po kasi ito kung ito ay will not be broken into manageable parts. 
consistent with accountability and the expectation of people that it's in every centavo uh, itemized for expense should at least be worthwhile and should be beneficial to its uh, and every Filipino. Gusto po kasi nila kahit papano in the future makakita lang sila ng tinatawag nating uh, silver lining. Uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. Hindi po yung uh, headlamp ng isang coming train. Uh, kinakailangan po ma-break up May patupad yung budget po ng masinop. Let us avoid yung mga rent-seeking policies, lag-rolling policies. We should probably approach each item like they are public goods. Para maipatupad po siguro ang isang equitable budget for every citizen of this republic. Salamat po, Maraming Speaker. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Sponsor.